all know this is the second time. I like to uh, exercise a little bit of the uh, testing over uh, you trainees. How about it? You like it? I do believe all the other saints would be happy to hear. How would you take care of the testing? I must tell you, it is very easy, yet it is very hard. Easy if you have get yourself prepared, hard if you didn't. <laughs> right? Let's try. Let's try. Well, still I'd like to uh, <clears throat> give a little open word. Uh, Wednesday night will last for all together about uh, eight, eight, 18, right? 18 uh, weeks. So this means we may possibly have 18 times of Wednesday. Tonight is the second time. In these uh, many Wednesdays, we will try firstly to cover the apostles' teaching. Then secondly, we will cover the New Testament leadership. Well, I was preparing the outlines, I realized probably our time is not that adequate. So just to cover these two things, the apostles' teaching and the New Testament leadership will occupy all the 18 Wednesdays. So there will be no time left for the third thing which we intend to cover. That is the war between the two kingdoms in the universe. Amen. Probably we don't have time to do that. But anyhow, we have to endeavor, endeavor to cover the first two things, the apostles' teachings. Wow. Well, <clears throat> we have to know through the 20th centuries, a lot of disputes, right? even fightings, you may say. So a lot of splits, divisions came out. I must tell you, all the debates, the fights, and all the divisions, please, have been just due to the two things. What two things? They are short of the proper knowledge concerning the apostles' teachings. We have a clear book here, the New Testament, right? And the entire content of the New Testament is just the apostles' teaching. But, you know, you have that many chapters with that many verses, the last points, the last lines, the last subject. You may argue, you know, we all know, even with such a small thing, hot water, cold water, fresh water, or salt water for baptism, people fought. People fought. When I was young, I was almost involved in this. That was uh, uh, 65 years ago. You see, but thank the Lord, I didn't get <laughs> involved in that foolish thing, right? Even such a small thing, you know, okay, to baptism, to baptize is to immerse. That's right. Then immerse this way, backward, immerse this way, outward, or immerse straightward. Fighting with her. Did you know this? Even, okay, to immerse, right? Properly speaking, Backward, right? It's hard for people to immerse people forward, right? Then they say, okay, backward, how many times? Once or three times. Still argue, see? Small things. Why they would have all these kind of fightings 
just because they don't know what the apostle teaching, right, covers. Yes, you ask, has a constitution, but not everyone can interpret it. We all know this. In our country, there are only nine. Right? There are only nine. Knowledgeable, experienced, with super understanding of the law of the country. Only they are qualified to interpret the Constitution. We know this. Right? But today, it seems everybody can. <laughs> everybody can. Everybody can. My goodness, today, I got a paper. I didn't read it. It says, God's economy versus deputy authority. <laughs> God's economy versus deputy authority. That means God's economy is against deputy authority. What is this? What is this? Okay. I just give you as illustration. So, to solve our problem, because today we do have a problem. You see, among us, there is a division. Right? Even not too many who cause the division. Yet still, there is a number of brothers, including some sisters, that cause a division. Right? And they talk, and they are, uh, okay, it's still going on, right? So we must have a clear view Amen. how to face them, Amen. right? Amen. With, uh, with the uh, uh, brethren assembly, uh, that uh, what you call in the U.S. primus brethren, right? Actually, they are just British brethren with John Nelson Darby as the leader and so forth. Uh, among them, we studied their history. Uh, if some uh, thing would happen as what we are encountering today, they would right away ex excommunicate, right, to right. cut off, right. to cut off that meeting, <laughs> right? And from the very beginning, this was over 60 years, even I was there, we got to know they did something wrong. They should not cut off. They should not excommunicate. You see? And this is why today, even when we suffer so much, we, we would not do this. But according to Romans 16, right? You have to. Right? You have to what? Right? Right. You have to. <clears throat> Keep away. Okay. Then Titus 3.10 says, they are what? Fixes, that means sectarian person. You warn once, twice, and then you reject. Uh, to keep yourself away from anything divisive. You see, uh, to reject any kind of division. This is, using today's medical term, this is to exercise quarantine. Right? Say, in big family, we have grandpa. Now he's sick, very sick. And his sickness is very contagious. Right? Then what? Then the family cuts him off? Ask communicate? No, no. no. Then the family does anything? Or does something? Or does nothing? Surely the family has to exercise to quarantine. Right? To quarantine doesn't mean no more love toward him. That means more love. Right? And to keep him in safety and to keep the whole family from being contaminated, right? This is clear. Well, anyhow, we still need a clear view to know the New Testament concerning these kind of basic and crucial matters. 
This is why I feel burdened, you know. I feel burdened to give two messages to the elders at uh, uh, the uh, uh, Sunday Day Conference. One is on the apostle teaching, the other is on the New Testament leadership. But when I was speaking that, I was, I, I realized that was altogether not adequate. So I promised I would continue to give more messages on these two matters, on the apostles' teaching and on the New Testament leadership. Now I'm here. We probably at least need eight times to cover the apostles' teaching. Let me tell you, what is our line? You see, now you have the outline here. The outline says what? The apostles' teaching is the entire speaking of God in the New Testament. The entire speaking, right? Then, Roman number two, concerning, okay, the entire speaking of God concerning what? Right? Yeah, concerning God, New Testament economy. Uh, what, what is God, New Testament economy? <laughs> right? Today, when I saw that paper, I would say, do you, the writers of this paper, know what is God's New Testament economy? Right? Uh, you must allow me, you must give me a little grace that it, it, it was Witness Lee in Christianity that pick up the New Testament economy. You go to your bookshelf, you go to the Christian bookstores, you try the best to look into all the pages where is such a term. Sister Randmacher, you are quite qualified because 48 years, no, 50 years ago, yeah, in 1940, right? In Shanghai. Huh? 38. No, 38. Well, uh, I, I would say 1940. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was the time she saw me, and that was the time I saw her. And she was a missionary in Shanghai. But she got attracted by the recovery. So she came to the meetings. <laughs> I was at that time just a little over 30. <clears throat> Don't forget that was 50 years ago. Uh, yeah, okay. But she says 38. Uh, 38. Then if that was 38, 52 years ago. But my memory, sister, is <laughs> accurate than yours. <clears throat> 1938, I never went to Shanghai. 1930, I was in North. You see, North also 1939, but in the fall of 1939, when Brother Nee came back from England, he was going to hell to hold the first special conference on the body of Christ, and he cabled me to North and asked me, asking me to go, and I went in 1939, September. Then after that, I went to North. Then in 1940, I went to attend his training. His training, right? Well, anyhow, <clears throat> that was the time we saw each other. But my point is, surely you are qualified to answer my question. As a missionary, mm -hmm. uh, 50 years ago, you were a missionary, so you knew, you knew Christianity. Right? Have you ever seen such a term, God's New Testament economy? No. <laughs> anyway, you may say, oh, Brother Lee, you are proud. Whether I'm proud or not proud, I don't care for this. I care for the fact. Amen. From whom you heard New Testament economy? Right? What is God New Testament economy? Tom, you tell me. Now you should know. Okay. 
Please tell us, tell us, what is God, you test the country, you have to know, this is a part of my testing on you. Okay. Uh, Brother Lee, God's New Testament economy is simply the teaching of the apostles. <laughs> My. It's the apostles' teaching. You are too smart. You must be the best attorney. <laughs> no, can, no one can say you are wrong. You are just right. But I still like to ask, what are the contents of God's New Testament economy? Well, Brother Lee, to answer this question, what are the contents of God's New Testament economy? Mm. There are four major sections. Oh, okay. what are the four major sections? The, I first, like the <laughs> first is the incarnation of the triune God. Uh -huh. What the second? The second is the all-inclusive death. Amen. What the third? The third is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then the fourth. And the fourth is the ascension. Is this all? Well, tonight we're going to get into a grand <laughs> subject. But your answer shouldn't be, shouldn't say the New Testament economy is of four sections. Right. You shouldn't say this. Right. You have to say we have seen four sections right. of the New Testament economy thus far. Right. What will the fifth, sixth, or hundredth? I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm right? Right. Yes. Okay, thank you. I just tell you, you are right. You have covered the first four sections. Now we will be on the fifth. And the fifth is what? The fifth is the most complicated and most complicating section. All the fightings, all these uh, dispute, disputes are just <laughs> here in this section. All the divisions and this and that, right? Here I must let you know, say a word, very strange. Two thousand years, whenever there was a dispute. This causes Christians to be enemies one another. Don't you realize today those brothers just look at me as their enemy? Don't you? Don't you realize? The way they treated me, the way they sent me, defend me, putting out animals, Anonymous, anonymous, papers, bugs, just a second I mean. Well, this is nothing new to me. I saw what was there with Brother Lee, Brother Ni, nee, I told you already. Then uh, I came out of the Menon Chan to start the ministry from Taiwan. Then I, to, I went to Southeast Asia. Right? Then I went to North Asia, Korea, Japan. Then I came to the West, to here, and I went to uh, Europe. <clears throat> and in this quarter century, this is the third time of the turmoil. <laughs> this is the third time. 19, around 1960, there was one. Then, around 1978, there was once here. I don't know. All the time, they would consider you as an enemy. So there's something here. OK. Now, in this section, this is the most complicated section. What section? Actually, this is the section concerning the church. The church after Christ's ascension. See, the falling section is the church. Thomas, have you realized that the first four sections are all together concerning Christ? God incarnate, that's Christ. 
the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, ascension of Christ, all these four items are just concerning Christ. Actually, these four items just Christ. So we have covered Christ. And now we come to second. You know, we used to say, I'm for Christ and the church. This may become a slogan. When you say I'm for Christ and the church, you don't know what is Christ. You don't know what is Christ. You don't know what is church. Okay, now the four sections are concerning Christ. Now from section five. <laughs> Nearly just this one section is concerning the church. But this is quite complicated. You know how I, how I entitled this section? Really, A, B, C, D, right? I printed this here just to remind you. I will not speak on them. I spoke on them already. Just to remind you what we have covered, now we continue to say, capital E, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit for the baptizing of all the believers. No church, right? <laughs> no church, that's right. But into one body. Into one body. This is the church. Under this, you have Arabic one. Into one body to be the body of Christ, having Christ as the head. Number two, to be the bride of Christ. Number three, turn right, number three, to be the universal one new man. Amen. Right? Tonight we are going to cover these three points, three sub points. To be the body of Christ, to be the bride of Christ, to be the universal new man. These are just only three sub subheadings, sub sub subsections, right? And under the subsections you have sub subs. Right? A B C D. So many. Right? Then after this, next week, we will cover to be God's house. Amen. Right? To be God's house. Then to be God's household. That means God's to be God's house, that means to be God's home. To be God's household, that means to be God's family. Amen. And so forth. A lot of things there. You see? And eventually, after all the, this many to be's, to be something of Christ, this and that, all Christ, to be something of God, this and that, all of God, then to be the church. Amen. You see? To be the church. The church has two aspects, universal and local. So we, when we come to local churches, we come to the what? Termination, the boundary of this section. This is what? E section, A, B, C, D, E, right? Then after this, we have F. F is concerning, concerning the kingdom. Yeah. Then after that, we will cover G. G is the New Jerusalem. Yeah. Now, Thomas, you got all. From A to G. This is from one to seven. Seven sections. The New Testament economy just covers the seven sections. So here, I give you already, you see, Thomas, actually, you should uh, tell me what <clears throat> the uh, uh, ministry, I mean the New Testament economy is from the incarnation of God to the consummation of the New Jerusalem. Amen. Is this here? Right. right? What did the New Testament economy say? From the incarnation of God to the consummation of the New Jerusalem. Very good. You know, the first page of New Testament is just God's incarnation. And the last page of uh, Revelation is just New Jerusalem. 
Now, in between these two ends, what are here? Between God's incarnation, the New Jerusalem, what are here? Peter, you just said your old slogan, Christ and the Church. What are, the, what are Christ and the Church? Well, it, it's the incarnation of the triune God and the all-inclusive death of Christ okay. and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Man, 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 man. Learn, learn. You know, in the morning, I stress already, this is a training, right? Mm -hmm. This is a class, and you are all my students. Right. When I ask you something, you have to answer me in a proper student way. Right? What are there, what are here in between of the two ends? Right? The beginning is the incarnation of God, and the end is the consummation of the new Jerusalem. What are the items in between these two ends? We have the process of the triune God and the formation of the body of Christ. <sighs> you see? Have you, uh, <laughs> have you read, <laughs> have you read the first outline? You see? Actually, Peter, incarnation includes the human living. You should have noticed this already, right? The human living is a prolonged section of incarnation, right? So the human living should be included in the incarnation, okay? Then after incarnation, what is here? All inclusive death of Jesus Christ. That's right, the death of Christ. Amen. Then what follows? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's right, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What follows? The ascension of Christ. Very good. Then what follows? The child of glory of the Holy Spirit for the baptizing of all believers into one body. Into one body. Amen. This one body is the most complicating Amen. section. And this is church section. Okay. After church, what is? Kingdom. The kingdom. The kingdom. Very good. Then after the kingdom, what is? Jerusalem. Very simple. Right? All together, only seven items. For your way to remember, you must remember the beginning. What is the beginning? The incarnation of the triad. What is the ending? Consultation of the new Jerusalem. In between? <laughs> now, let me tell you. It's very easy. You don't need to think. In between death, resurrection, ascension, outpouring. No, no. Okay. Death, resurrection, ascension, outpouring. Then what? The kingdom. Then what? You just new to some. Well, you, you just keep in mind the beginning and the end. It's easy to remember the five items between. Death, resurrection, ascension, outpouring, kingdom. Good enough. Have you got? This is all the New Testament teachers. Amen. Let me check. What is the New Testament? The Apostles' teaching. Uh, okay, very good. The Apostles' teaching. Now, what is the Apostles' teaching? From the Incarnation. No, no, the, the entire speaking. Of God in the New Testament. From oh, from okay, 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 okay. Then. <laughs> <laughs> what this entire speaking of God teaches. God's New Testament economy. Okay, very good. God New Testament economy. What is God New Testament economy? From the incarnation of the divine God to the consummation of the New Jerusalem. Very good. What are between items? Death, resurrection, ascension. <laughs> so, you see, it is very easy. Isn't this easy? Well, the time is gone. Actually, I want to uh, test you. <clears throat> test you what? The incarnation of the God. For what? You have to tell me. To do what? You have to tell me. Right? 
For God to be born in a virgin, to do what? To partake of man's blood and flesh, to bring God into man, that man himself is man, to pass through human living. This is incarnation. Then, what? The all inclusive death of Christ, what? So the problems between man and God. Okay. I, to Okay. Three. The listening. Divine life as the eternal life, signified by the water flowing out of the crucified Christ. Okay. Very good, right? Now we come to the resurrection of Christ. Resurrection of Christ. What? Testifying that God is satisfied with His death for us, and that we are justified by God in, in Him and, and with Him. him. Very good. Then. Then, imparting the divine life into the believers of Jesus Christ, and beginning them as the many sons of God. Very good. Four. Making lives a life-giving spirit. Five. Cultivating the triune God and making the spirit of God the ultimate consummation of the triune God as a spirit. Very good. Do you really understand all this talk about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we come to the sins of Christ. What? Okay. For Christ is presented to God as the first fruit of the harvest. Then. God takes his freshness in resurrection. Okay, the open part. For Christ to be crowned with glory and honor. For Christ to be made both Lord and Christ. For Christ to be made. The consummation of Christ as the Savior. Do you understand this? Do you understand this? Well, okay. If you don't understand, you have to go back to study. Okay. Now, tonight, we come to capital E. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit for the baptizing of all the believers into one body. Surely you would understand me and sympathize with me that I couldn't speak too much. I just somehow take care of the all that. So Near every point needs a message. Right? What shall we do? The whole year will be for this. Right? So I just mentioned a little bit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You have to know God incarnate, right? And lived on this earth. And he went to the cross to die the all-inclusive death, solving all the problems. Then he resurrected, right? To be the life-giving spirit. And to be also the first born son of God. And also to what? Generate us. To be the many sons of God. And so forth. Right? Resurrection. Then he ascended. First day in the morning, secretly. Right? Then, uh -huh, after 40 days, he ascended openly. Right, to be crowned, to be made Lord and Christ, to be made leader and savior, right? And so forth. So, all the things concerning God's plan and redemption were fully accomplished. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That was a big accomplishment. There should have been a big celebration. Right? Uh, of course, the New Testament doesn't say this much, but in Ephesians 4, you could see a little hint there, a little window open to you, because there was what? A parade 
there was a pulsation, celebrating pulsation. Celebrating what? Celebrating Christ's victory. Amen. Christ's victory in what? In his death and in his resurrection. And now he is ascending. He ascended in the procession, celebrating his victory. Amen. Then he reached the heavens. He was there with God. Then, after everything then in the heavens, the triune God, they all become the consummated God. <laughs> right? The consummated God. You just consider after the ascension, Christ was in heavens. By that time, the triune God was all together consummated. Right? Before the creation of the world, in eternity past, God was there only as divine. He didn't have the human nature. Right? And he didn't have the experience of human living. Am I right? And he never went through a death. Right? So all inclusive. Right? In him, there was no element of death. Just like in him, there was no element of humanity. Right? Then also, no resurrection. He was resurrection, but he never experienced resurrection. Am I right? And then there was no ascension, because there had never been some dissension. Right? But after Christ's ascension, my, the triumph God, now becomes of so many, many elements. Amen. The divine element, am I right? Do you agree? The human element, do you agree? The dead element, the resurrection element, and the ascension element. You just compare the same God. The same God before creation, then after the ascension, before creation, what was there? Tell me. Just God as the divine person. No humanity in it. No dead element with the effectiveness of death in it. No element of resurrection. No element of ascension. Right? That was what I call the raw God. They struck, still struck their yeah, civilization's ears. They was, you have to keep away from this man, Winners Lee, because he teaches heresy that God is wrong. <laughs> That's true. Before the creation, God, in eternity, was he not raw there? <laughs> he was not cooked. <laughs> right? When you bought a fish, right? When it was raw, just fish, nothing else, right? If you put the fish through the cooking, you know, a large element, right? You know this, a large element, get in, get in. Especially the Spanish cooking. They put in a large passage. They are very much like God's coaching. <laughs> the Mandarin coaching in China was not like God. So simple. But God's coaching not so simple. Amen. Right? When you cook the fish, you just <laughs> have the fish passing through some process, right? Not that much. But look at God's coaching. My God's coaching. Amen. Instead of going into an oven, he went into a womb Amen. of a virgin. Amen. Instead of staying there for two hours, he stayed there for nine months. What a process. A long process. Right? How many years he lived on this earth? More than 30 years. You see? Even even in his death, he lasted six hours. 
from 9 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, right? That long time for him to die slow, right? He did that through the long process. Then he entered into resurrection. Then he ascended. I tell you what a procedure of the long processes. Now God is in his ascension. <laughs> what can God is this? Yeah. This best word you said, Peter. The consummated God. He was the raw God. After being cooked, he became the wrong, the consummated God. Amen. Am I right? Do you think the consummated God is divided into three persons? No. <coughs> huh. I'd like to call your attention to one verse, Acts 33. You open to that. Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Which you read? Acts 2, 33. Please read to me. Acts 2, 33. Yeah. Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of God, and having received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, he poured out this which you both see and hear. Uh, just the second half. He received the Holy Spirit. Okay? It seems it was only the Holy Spirit to be poured out. Only the Holy Spirit was poured out. You see? But don't forget, he received the Holy Spirit from the Father. <laughs> from the Father. Yeah. Do you know in New Testament Prince with this? When you have the Spirit coming from the Father, the Father comes with him. Right. <laughs> this New Testament usage. Mm -hmm. Right? right. Let me say, you know, today the Lord Jesus sent us to Africa. Do you believe, according to New Testament usage, only you go to Africa? No. no. I suppose they'll send you to knock on people's doors. <laughs> Do you believe only you go to knock? No. And Jesus stays in heaven? No. Not going with you? No. This is not the New Testament usage. Could you follow me? So, when Christ received the Holy Spirit from the Father, the Father comes with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Am I right? Then, this Christ pour out the Spirit with the Father. Do you believe after he pour out the Spirit with the Father, he remained in heaven? You tell me. No. Then what way? Tell me, what way? Well, the way that when she poured out the Spirit, the Father washed with the Spirit. When he, I mean, when re she received the Spirit from the Father, the Father washed with the Spirit. Now, when he poured out the Spirit, he was also with the Spirit. Yeah. So eventually, the triune God, the Spirit, the Son, and the Father, all oh, were proud. Amen. So, the very spirit, spirit proud on the day of Pentecost was the consummated spirit, which is the consummation of the triune God. Amen. Have you got it? But I was young in Christianity. I learned their kind of theology. They say the father was sitting on the throne. And the son came. Okay, the father gave him, gave him the spirit. Right? Then he brought the spirit. Only spirit alone 
was proud. The father remained in, in the throne and he remained in the heavens. This was Christianity's teaching. Am I right? Mr. Red, Mr. Red Brother. Am I right? Yeah. But the New Testament does mean this way. The New Testament means when Christ ascended to heaven, he received from the Father the Holy Spirit. And the Father comes with the Holy Spirit. Right. One with the Spirit. Then he proud this Spirit, who is one with the Father, right? In the way that he becomes what? With the Spirit and with the Father. So eventually, the one who pours out is the one who is poor out. <laughs> Have you got it? So eventually, who is proud? The triune God in his consummation. What was poured out under the Pentecost was the consummated God in his consummation. Have you got it? Then he proud himself as the child God, right? <laughs> Upon whom? You have to say, upon all his believers. Amen. Including the Jews, the Gentiles, the ancient ones, the present ones. Oh, you and I, we all were what? Baptized. Amen. In that consummated spirit as the consummation of the triune God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We're all being baptized there. Amen. What? Into one body. Right? Into one body. We got baptized already. Right? So I give you the verses. Be careful about the references. I give you Acts 2, 1, 2, 4, right? That was the accomplishment of this outpouring. Then verses 17, 18, which say clearly uh -huh, what happened in Acts 1 through 4 was the outpouring of the Spirit. Then verse 33 tells us, what was poured out, not just the Spirit alone, but the triune God. The Spirit with the Father, and the Spirit with the Father, and with the Son. Right? Then this is the fulfillment of chapter 1, 5. Right? You will be baptized in the Spirit. The Lord prophesied that. Then, verse 8, and this was to receive the power from on high. Right? And then all these accomplished and transpired on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem. Then chapter 10, verses 44 to 46, and chapter 11, verses 15 to 17. And these two portions of verse told, uh, told us what transpired on the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius. And these two sides of the baptism, right, put together, it becomes a complete baptism. Amen. To have all the Jewish believers and the Gentile believers through all the generations baptized together into one body, right? Then, lastly, the reference. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, regardless we are Jews, Gentiles, this and this and this and that, we all have been baptized right, in one spirit into one body. This is what? This is the outpouring. This is baptism. For what? For the formation of the one body. Right? Formation is my word. Actually, it should be, what, baptized into one body. Not just conformation, but baptized into one body. 
Okay, now this baptism, you have to realize, in God's eyes, has two aspects. What is recorded in the verses we just have read is a corporate baptism. Corporate, the whole body of Christ, including all the believers, in this one big baptism. Do you know how big is the baptistry? Do you know? Tell me, how big is the baptistry? <coughs> Universally big. Amen. Universally big. Amen. The entire universe is a baptistry. Amen. Big baptism. Are you clear? This is corporate, but still have the individual aspect. <laughs> so every believer has to be baptized. Yeah? Don't forget. Matthew 28, 19, go to disciple the nations, baptizing them into Amen. the triumph God. Amen. Eventually, in Acts, we are told to be baptized into the triumph God is just to be baptized into Christ. Right. <laughs> Why? Because Christ is the embodiment of the triumph God. You cannot be baptized in the Christ, yet you have not been baptized in the Father and the Spirit yet. This is a joke. Amen. Right? As long as you are baptized in the Christ, you are baptized in the Father. In the Father. And you are baptized in the Spirit as well. Right? Have you ever, have you ever, you know, I don't use experience, I said, have you ever applied? Have you ever applied the corporate baptism to yourself? You have to say it. Yes. When you were baptized into Christ at the time you believed into him, and that was your, your application of what happened there. If you were a Jew, what happened there in Jerusalem? If you were gentle, what happened there in Corinthians home? Right? You just apply your baptism today is just a kind of application. As it is a kind of application, it's also a kind of realization that you realize you have been baptized. So what? So it is a kind of participation in that corporate <coughs> baptism. Amen. Yeah. Now, I believe, <coughs> I say again, probably you never heard this kind of saying, that your baptism is individual. And your individual baptism is a kind of application and realization and participate in in what? In the culprit baptism, which transpired 2,000 years ago. Amen. Now you understand it. Saints, let me check with you. Have you ever heard this? Is this a heresy? No. Then what is this? <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, this was the apostle's teaching. But now the Lord gives us the new light to see this. You see? It is there. Uh, it has been there 2,000 years ago. At least more than 1,900 years in the printed pages. But we didn't see this in others' writings. I wouldn't say I didn't say at all. Through the years, even I still remember, 60 years ago, I read something that says your baptism is just to apply what transpired there. You see, I did read this. The years ago, I read it, but I didn't have that much comprehension as today. 
right? So I'd like to pass on to you that you all have to realize whenever you baptize an individual, right? Surely baptism should be individual baptism, right? We can put three into the water, but still you have to baptize one by one, right? You cannot baptize three all together. Nobody can do that right? unless you bind them together. It's hard, hard for you to immerse them, right? But anyhow, <laughs> the immersion should be individual. And that kind of individual immersion is your application and realization of what transferred there 2,000 years ago. And also, that is your participation. So you would say, hallelujah, Amen. I've been baptized Amen. in the Holy Spirit, Amen. in the consummation of the triune God, Amen. in the consummation of the triune God. Amen. When? Very good. <laughs> now, as you have been baptized two thousand years ago, why you still are baptized here? For our application of realization and participation. Uh, this is my application of that. Amen. And this is my realization of that. Amen. And this is my participation in that. Amen. So how did you have been baptized? Amen. <clears throat> Why you, ha you still haven't speak in tongues, spoke in tongues? <laughs> you have to tell the apostle teaching never goes this far. There's not such a thing. I have the apostle teaching, not a part, not a section, even not a single line of the apostle teaching does go so far. There's something further by the Bible readers added. Am I right? So what? So if you insist to speak in tongues, this is a different teaching. <laughs> Could you see this? This is a different teaching. Not a part of the apostles' teaching. This is different teaching. A teaching that's different from the apostle's teaching. Am I right? So eventually, this teaching becomes a wind of teaching. Amen. A wind of teaching that blows the saints away from the body of Christ. Could you see this? That this causes division. We have to solve all the things in such a basic way. Okay? Now, we go on. Very good. We all have been baptized into one body to be what? Number one, to be the body of Christ. One body, yes. Whose body? Your body? No, Christ's body. Christ's body. Who is Christ? <laughs> the head is very good. Okay. Uh, now, huh? okay. Uh, this body to be the body of Christ, having Christ as the head. You have the references, right? Then, under these, you have sub subs, small letters, huh? A, this body of Christ is the fullness of Christ. Amen. Do you know the fullness? Of course you know this one. I demonstrated that quite, quite a number of times, right? Suppose tonight I'm here speaking to you. If I am here only as a head, <laughs> right? No body. You would say poor man. Or I may have a body, of course, I'm not a giant. Suppose I'm so, 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 so. What would you say? Is there any fullness? No. So, okay, that's clear. And the fullness of Christ, who is this Christ? One who fills yeah. all in all. He is the one who fills all. I don't know. In all. 
even tonight, I don't know how to interpret. First all, in all. How to interpret this? And now this indicates he's universally great, unlimited great. His greatness doesn't have any limitation. He fills all in all. And this verse, with this expression, is different from Colossians 3.11. We will get there. Okay, B. At the full growth, the raised surplus of Christ. Full grown, uh, full growth, full growth. <laughs> Sometimes, have you uh, never uh, seen a retarded boy? Uh, a retarded boy? The head. It seems okay, but the body is retarded. It, this body doesn't have the full growth, right? Stand up, Peter. <laughs> Come to the platform. Okay, you see this man? Suppose he is so dwarf, okay? He doesn't have the full growth. Now, you see, he has the full growth. Could you see? Where is his wife? She's downstairs typing. I'm downstairs. Sorry. If you don't have this full growth, I don't believe your wife would have married you. <laughs> right? And the full growth is what? Is the rich surplus. <laughs> you see, and th this part is a surplus. This part is a surplus. <laughs> okay. You see? Have you seen this? What is the church at the body of Christ? Is Christ full growth and Christ rich surplus. Okay. See, at the extension, <laughs> extension, Peter, sorry. We have no way to, to illustrate. We don't have any extension. My extension just as much. <laughs> right? The extension and the spread. The spread. I tell you, he is on the one hand the pine shooting the sky. He is also the vine spreading to cover the entire earth. Don't you know? I told you a few times. 1958, I was in London. One day, the friend told me, Brother Lee, as you are here in England, you must go to see the Queen's vine. The Queen has a big vine in the great greenhouse. I said, I don't like to see so many things. Well, you, you must go and see. OK, they brought me there. Yes, humanly speaking, it's quite big, quite big, right? But not so big as our hole. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was big. After seeing, the friends asked me, how about? I said, this is too small. <laughs> I have seen one much, much bigger. And the greenhouse around the globe. <laughs> the greenhouse around the globe. This, they got, what am I? Here? I said, don't you know the vine? The Lord says, I'm the true vine. <laughs> Today, Christ, how big is Christ? How great is Christ? How extensive is Christ? Around the globe. Amen. Right? <laughs> the vine is covering the entire earth, Amen. spreading, not just shooting, right? So the extension, the thread of Christ is the body of Christ, which is the church. Which is the church? No, D, the continuation of Christ. 
Is Christ through? No. Christ still here. You see, not tonight in this hall? Yes. Yes, he continues here. Continuation. Then E as a reproduction, duplication, multiplication. What is this? You tell me what difference between reproduction and duplication? Then what difference between multiplication and the two, two other items? Well, you understand, good enough, right? Reproduction. Huh? Today we have their machine, their, their machine to reproduce. Right? And every reproduction is a duplication. Am I right? Think about it. And all the duplications and multiplica uh, uh, reproductions are the multiplication. It was just one seed, you know, in the afternoon I saw it. Now, hundreds of seeds, thousands of seeds multiplied. Yeah. Multiplication. This is the church as the body of Christ. Now, lastly, as the expression of Christ. This is all the expression of Christ. Sometimes, you know, when I saw a brother from his back, I didn't see the face yet. Just look at his, his, his body. I know that was he. <laughs> right? Your body expresses you. And this Christ is the embodiment of the triune God. Saints, I did this purposely to show you the Bible is endless. Even the interpretation of the Bible is endless. When I was in Taiwan, every year after I spoke, certain message, and those messages put into printing. Then the next year I came back. I still see the same thing, still speak the same thing, but something further. All these things I've covered already in the past 25 years, even in the USA, and all printed in the page. But if you go back to them, tonight you have something, something added. Something added, right? Okay, and now this is the first to be, to be the body of Christ. Now the second to be, to be the bride of Christ. <laughs> Christ, I mean the church is the body of Christ. Meantime, the church is also the bride of Christ. And this bride is the increase the enlargement. Uh -huh. Do you know a single man? Times do you know? A single man, just a half. Right? A married man is a couple. Two pieces. Two pieces. Look, look, look at my, my two hands. You see? Like this. Now, this is single man. This is a brother without a wife. This is not, well, this is not so good, right? This is why the Bible tells us man lives alone in the eyes of God is, is not so good. Now, God created, actually built a wife to man. Now, man and his wife, the couple together, this is complete. This is the increase, also the enlargement. You know, Tom, you have been enlarged in your wife. Who is your wife? Where is she at now? Who? Bonnie. 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 Yes. Wrong. You see, wrong. <laughs> Bonnie de Verdic. <laughs> then who are you? I'm Tom de Verdic. Right. So two parts of the work. Right. Right. Added together right. to become a couple. So the second part is the enlargement of the first part. 
And the first part is the source. Go, go down. Then B, as the counterpart of Christ. Do you understand what is a counterpart? That's a part. <laughs> Right? Your wife is a counterpart, and that counterpart is a part of you. He is a counterpart, right? A part of you, of Christ. This is typified by Eve as a counterpart of Adam. We cover this quite meaningful, you know this, right? Eve was not created. Eve was just a piece of rib, right, that was taken out of Adam, and God built a rib into a woman to match the man. The man is the husband, and the woman is the counterpart of that husband. Then the two became one. This is the church with Christ. Now see ABC. As the wife of Christ, you have to realize this wife has not been consummated yet. <laughs> right? This wife is to be con to consummated in the new Jerusalem. And today, in the church, and this church today, as the little wife of Christ, does not include Abraham, does not include David does not include all the Old Testament saints. Am I right? But in the New Jerusalem, right, all the saints, Old Testament plus to the New Testament, they all become the wife of Christ. Amen. That is a consummated wife. Amen. Today, the church as the wife of Christ is not consummated. You have all the references. Now, I like to go a little fast. Now, we come to third to be. To be the body of Christ, to be the bride of Christ, to be the universal new man. Amen. The church is a new man. Right? And the head of this new man is Christ, and the body of this new man is the body, the church. But here, it is called the new man. Okay, A, created of the Jews and Gentiles as one body through Christ. Christ in his death, you know, joined the Jews and the Gentiles together. Before Christ's death, you all know the story. The Jews and the Gentiles were just split, clear cut. Right? There was a strong partition, and this and that. But Christ died on the cross to take off the partition and to put the two together Amen. as one body. Amen. Right? Then in his death and resurrection, he, on the one hand, terminated these two parties in the old creation and germinate them in the new creation to make them not just a body, but a new man. So this new man, in brief, was created through Christ's death. Of what? Of the Jews and of the Gentiles. Right? Being made one body. It's quite meaningful. Well, we have a lot to say. These are the what? These are the apostles' teachings. Amen. Right? Now, B, Christ being all his members, uh, in all his members. Colossians 3.11 says, in the new man, there's no Greek, no Jew, no layman, uh, no, 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 no free man, no bond man. Amen. But Christ is all in all. Amen. This all in all is different from Ephesians. Christ fills all in all. Christ fills all in all, that refers to the universe. But this all in all refers to his body. In his body, there are many members. 
And Christ is the all members. Christ is you. Christ is me. Christ everybody among us. <laughs> Not only the, and Christ is always in us. He's in you. He's in me. He's in you. Every one of us. Amen. That means what? The entire new man is just Christ. Amen. You know, one day I told a lady, not too long, I said, your last name should not be Dvorak. Your last name must be Christ. Right? I have an eye specialist taking her of my eyes. His name is Christensen. Yeah, that means sin of Christ. This is kind of Scandinavia. It's a Scandinavian name. The Scandinavians, they all like to use sin, 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 Peterson. Yeah, Peterson. The sin of Peter. Uh, Christian sin. Yeah. Uh, sin of Christ. Well, actually, we are Christ. <laughs> Our last name is not Christian sin, but Christ. You know, in, what's your last name? Trot. 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 Trot, T-R-O-T-T. -T -T, huh? It's not so bad as Christ. <laughs> How about you change your name? <laughs> Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. There we go. <laughs> now, then how about changing it into Jesus? <laughs> Jesus Christ. How about it? You, you, you think this is too much? It's turned out too much. Paul says, for me to live is Christ. For me to live here in trout. No. For me to live is what? Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not too much. Right? Okay, lastly, uh, this new man is not consummated yet. <laughs> A lot of old creation still here. Right? The old man. So, Colossians 3 and Ephesians 4 all say to be consummated by being renewed day by day. And day by day is mentioned by Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Renewed day by day. By what way? By putting off the old man. And by putting on the new man. Uh, day after day, day after day. I, I, I really feel so. Every day, something of my old man peel off. Just peel off. You peel off. You see? And something of the new uh, is put on. And this is a renewing. Not consummated yet. So the new man has not been completed. It's under the process of two sides of puttings. Putting off one side and putting on. Every day something peels off from us, the old, right? Even you trainees, I, I believe and also I do expect that while you are staying here to be trained, every day you experience something peeling off. Something peeling off. Am I right? And uh, you know, we all have our background. Right? The hard part of our background is our <laughs> racial character. The Japanese has a Japanese character, so to say. Right? Uh, we do have one or two Japanese trainees. Yeah, who are? Who are? Are they not here? No? Not this time. Oh. Where are they? The Japanese. Well, okay. We do have some Korean uh, trainees. Would you Korean brothers stand up to make a show to us? <laughs> yeah. You see? They look very much like Chinese. 
nearly the same, but they have their Korean what? Korean racial characters or characteristics. Okay? Okay. And we have some from England, we have some from New Zealand, we have some from Holland. All kinds of uh, characteristics, all kinds of racial differences. And uh, Sometimes, if you do not live in Christ, under his cross, your Holland Dutch characteristic will come out. And nobody can take that. <laughs> and the soldiers say, especially the Korean character, oh, <laughs> oh, that's hard. Neither is the Chinese character not hard? Also hard. It's terrible. Sometimes you just ask the Chinese brother, do you like it? He won't say, hmm. Do you like it? Please tell me, do you like it? Hmm. Do you like it or not? Hmm. <laughs> Nobody knows. He's in the heaven, in the earth, on the Mars, on the moon. Nobody knows. <laughs> right? Especially to the frank Americans. All the Americans, so frank. It seems they don't have skin. <laughs> right? They only have the bones. You can see. Right away, you can see through. Even the bones, all are broken. You can see the mirror. The Chinese, they were. I tell you, hundreds of layers of coats. Well, I may, I may be too much. Anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, do you know what the experience, Christian experience is putting off? Yeah. Putting off, putting off, putting off, putting off. Actually, we are the same. We only have a Christian racial character. Amen. That's all. We're Christian. My, my racial a character is just Christian. Amen. Am I right? Oh, putting off the old man and put on the new man. We got renewed. When we got renewed, the new man is being consummated. Right? Still tonight, new man is under the consummation. Okay, I finished. Not so bad. Now it's your turn. The train is. You must take the lead to speak something. We don't ask to deal. All the saints, praise, join. They are, what they are uh, sharing, the testifying, the speaking, or the prophesying. Okay? Feel free to do this. We still have half an hour. Okay. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow us on social media or visit our website for more from Living Stream Ministry.